everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Julia, if this is your first time tuning in. This is a fragrance channel and I would love it if you subscribed and hit the notifications bell. Today, I've got a really fun video and I have been dying to do this all day. You guys, I've held through because this package arrived um, this morning and I have been wanting to unbox it with you together, like a total unboxing haul with you of some blind buys of new fragrances that I've added to my collection. These are purchases that I've made. If you have never seen my hauls, I don't do gigantic hauls with like 50 bottles or something in one go. <laughs> I really like to think about my purchases and I like to keep them small so that I can really appreciate each you know, purchase that I make. Let's open this together. I'm going to give you guys my first impressions of everything. And if you wanna see a detailed review of any of these scents, um, do let me know. What is this? Oh, these are samples. Okay, I have a little sample in here. Amour Amour by Cacherelle. I actually don't know this one. So, I mean, I've heard of it, but I've, I don't know this. I'm not familiar with this fragrance. I've actually never smelled it. Ooh, what else is in here? Ooh. <laughs> There's a little Haribo sweet gummy in here. I mean, I'll take it. Ooh, another sample. Armani Code. This is by Terry Mugler. And this is a very rare alien flanker. You might have seen a few of the Canadian fragrance YouTubers have just posted that they were able to buy this on a Canadian discount website. And I was watching their video and I just got kind of interested. I was like, hmm, I'll just randomly put in if I can get this in Switzerland. This is the alien Le Goût de Parfum. So it's the taste of fragrance, Le Goût de Parfum. This is a super limited edition flanker. I think they came out like, 2011. This has been um, discontinued and these are rare nowadays. This is going on eBay, I think for like 150 or 160, $180 on eBay. And I could find this at a discounter here in Switzerland. So this is a tester um, bottle, but apparently this only came as a 30 mil. I was able to get this like regular price and they did this taste of fragrance series for a few of the Mugler fragrances. So they did one for Alien, obviously. They did one for Angel. I think they did one for the Amen, basically the um, Alien DNA, but it also has this salted butter caramel note in there. And when I read that, I was like, Oh my God, I have to try this. I have the original Alien. I have a few of the flankers. I also have the Essence Absolue. There's only a few droplets left in that and I cannot get hold of another bottle. Okay, right now I'm smelling Alien. Okay, it really just smells like Alien, so... The salted caramel note is not as strong as some people thought it would be. Okay, on the skin, I can definitely smell it. On this, so on paper, I can't even really smell that caramel note. That's kind of strange. It just smells like Alien. It smells like a sweeter version of Alien. It smells like the Essence Absolue. On my skin, it definitely, I can smell this very caramelly vibe. It's not, it's not super salty. It is, so on the, I did a little bit of research. It's supposed to be a salted butter caramel note. It smells a lot like the Alien Essence Absolue, but I'll have to wear this a little bit more to see because some people in the reviews that I was reading said that the caramel note comes more when the, when there's been like a dry down of the perfume. I was hoping it would smell more salty. Paco Rabanne, Olympia. I was kind of thinking that it would be a little bit along that line with the salted note. It's a little bit salty, but not, not nearly as strong as the salty note in the Olympia by Paco Rabanne. I'm just wondering how this is going to develop. It smells really strong as well. It's an eau de parfum. And since this came out in 2011, I think this was pre-reformulation or before tweaking now that now that Terry Mugler is owned by L'Oreal some people have told me that it's been tweaked a little bit it's not exactly the same anymore and it's not supposed to be as strong I like it I I don't really think it's 
as caramelly salty as I thought it would be. But again, I'll have to see with the dry down. My first impression is that it's, it is very similar to the Alien Essence Absolue, which I'm almost out of. I have like a few sprays left. I probably have like four milliliters left in my bottle and I'm unable to get a new bottle. Like I can't find one. So I'm happy to have this because it kind of smells very, very similar to that. It's oily now on my, you can't see it, but it's actually where I applied it. I can see it's oily. So that's always to me a very good sign. All right, so that's the first thing that I was really excited about. Like I said, I'm just happy to have this. This is like a collector's item and I really didn't like need this, but you know, since this is going for like crazy prices on eBay, it's always nice to like have it. Okay, I need to have a sip of my wine. Mm. So good, today I'm drinking an Argentinian wine. It's a Malbec. Next thing I purchased is by Calvin Klein. I decided to get Euphoria, but this is Euphoria Amber Gold. And so this is a flanker that was released uh, solely to the Middle Eastern market. So I, this didn't actually launch here in Europe or in North America, as far as I know. This is a super affordable fragrance because I want to do very soon another one of my affordable fragrance videos because that's actually my most viewed video to date. I think honestly in this time when so many people are going through financial hardships, fragrance does give joy to people, especially if you are stressed or unhappy or something with this whole Corona COVID situation. But I feel so awkward recommending fragrances that are like hundreds of dollars. It's just like, not really reading the room correctly, you know what I mean? Like a lot of people are dealing with a lot of financial burdens at the moment. So I wanna do another video of good perfumes that you can get on a budget. I have actually not heard anyone talk about this. I've seen some people post videos about the men's fragrance. They, they did this, um, the Euphoria for Men Amber Gold, but I don't think I've ever seen anyone talk about this one. This is the women's one and the bottle, okay, so the bottle is awkward AF. It's really awkward. I don't like these awkward. I mean, it's kind of okay. You can hold it like this, but um, this is the 100 ml and this is an Eau de Parfum. Plum, Mandarin, Orange, mid notes, yeah. Honey, Orange, Blossom, and Orris. And base notes are Amber, Sandalwood, Vanilla, and Lobdenum. And I stumbled across this one. I just like was randomly browsing on for granting. I was just looking at the notes and I really just discovered this fragrance just going through the notes. Like I didn't really see any videos about this. It's really just, I thought the notes sounded really interesting and the reviews on there sounded good. So let's try. I mean, I'm very curious about this one actually. Whoa, this is, holy smokes. This is very intense. Oh my gosh, this smells very strong. Holy smokes, like nighttime fragrance for sure. I can definitely see why this was released for the Middle Eastern market. I get amber right away. The amber in here is really strong. So the orange I can smell, there's like a citrus note and the honey and the amber. Oh, I get a lot of sandalwood in this. I'm really getting a lot of sandalwood and amber. It's very intense. Wow, this is really a strong smelling fragrance. Back of my hand here. I'm definitely getting this like earthy, almost herbaceous kind of vibe from this. The honey is very strong in here. I'm getting a lot of honey. I'm getting a lot of honey. I'm getting a lot of amber. I'm getting a lot of sandalwood. And I'm also getting this sort of herbly vibe. I have no other fragrance that smells like this, to be honest, nothing. I'm not quite sure how I feel about this yet. It's such an unusual scent that I can't really tell you off the top of my head, like, if I love it or not. It doesn't smell mainstream designer market at all. Um, I can understand why this was released for the Middle East. It's It definitely has like an Oriental, Middle Eastern, very interesting kind of vibe. I cannot imagine wearing this in the daytime. Like this would be way too, like I would never, this is not appropriate, definitely for an office setting or anything like that. This is not like daytime office appropriate at all. This is like a, a nighttime fragrance. Definitely fall and winter. I cannot see myself wearing this in the spring or summer. I'll have to play around with this a bit more. At this point, I'm not like sure if I love it. It smells incredibly intense though. So I think from longevity, I'll probably get a lot of longevity and wear out of that. So then I, we're already onto the last fragrance and this is Premier Jour by Nina Ricci. This is actually the fragrance that I wore for many years in, like the early 2000s when this was released. I remember loving this, but I haven't 
seen it in stores, so I think it might have been discontinued. I'm not sure. I wanted to try it again because it's so inexpensive and I remember absolutely loving this. It's a floral fragrance with a gardenia and a sweet pea note. Look at that. So I got the 100 ml. Yeah, I think the bottle is absolutely cool. And I remember loving the bottle back then as well. But actually, now that I think of it, I think the bottle was different back then. As far as I remember, this was real glass. This feels like plastic now. Yeah, this is plastic. This was definitely solid glass when I had it. And I think this was like a milky glass bottle, the same as this. So it's, it's definitely changed. It looks cheaper now. Like it looks like plexiglass or something like a very solid plastic. So the top notes on this are sweet pea and mandarin orange. The middle notes are gardenia and orchid and the base notes are musk, sandalwood, woodsy notes and vanilla. Let's just get that. Oh yeah, I remember it now. But did it smell like this? Oh, it smells so good. It still smells really good. This is a really uh, pretty and fresh um, light floral that's like perfect for very innocent smelling daytime occasions. Oh, that sweet pea note, I can definitely smell it. There's a very strong sweet pea note and honestly, I don't know any other fragrances that have that sweet pea note. I feel like that's like a note that's not trendy right now. I feel like everything now is like white, white or yellow florals or rose or something like that. This is like the perfect daytime, very pretty, likable scent that you could definitely wear to like office work environments. You just smell really good wearing this. It, it is sweet, but it's not that sugary sweetness that you get from a lot of fragrances nowadays for women. This one has a sweetness, but it's not too much. I honestly can't remember if this is exactly how it smelled back when I was wearing it. This came out, I think it was like 2001 or something. Yeah, this came out in 2001. Holy smokes, I have a very good memory apparently. It definitely takes me back to that time, but honestly, now that I'm smelling it, I think it I think it has changed. I think when I was wearing it, it had a little bit more of a powderiness. There is like this musk element to it, which does make it like a little bit powdery, but honestly, it doesn't really smell super powdery now. So I think I remember it being a little bit softer. I feel like now it's a little bit more stronger on the florals and maybe a little bit stronger on the mandarin orange like that slight citrus note. I feel like it was a little bit more musky, a little bit softer, a little bit more powdery. I don't think it's one that has a crazy, like major sillage. Um, it's one that is a little bit lighter. It's more of a closer scent. I remember when I wear this, when I wore this, I did get a lot of compliments on this actually. I remember people asking me back then like often what perfume I was wearing. It has a almost clean floral scent. The florals are not heavy like a rose or a tube rose or something really, you know, with a lot of oomph to it. It's not like va va voom. I feel like they're light florals like gardenia and sweet pea. Those are quite like gentle, light flowers. I think they probably have reformulated at some point because I mean, the packaging is different too. You see here the bottle? There, you can see the bottle. You see how the whole thing was like a milky glass? That's how it used to look like. And this is what the what it looks like now. And the top here of the bottle, this part was also glass. I remember that. Is you know sometimes you can remember what something smelled like, but you can you can't really pinpoint what it was until you smell it again. So I feel like that's the same with this. I was so nostalgic for this fragrance. I was like, I'll buy it. It does kind of remind me of the old scent, but something's different about it. This one is a lot like lighter florally. And the one that I used to wear was more, a little bit muskier, powdery and more vanilla. I still do like it. It just isn't the exact same scent that I remember. All right, you guys, so that is actually it. I really hope you enjoyed this haul and unboxing. And let me know if you want to see more live unboxings or like instant unboxings as I get these fragrances and sort of my first impressions. Please hit that subscribe button, um, activate the notifications, follow me on Instagram, and I will see you very, very soon. Bye.